Hello and welcome back to another guide for Battletech. My name is Saiken and today we're investigating the burning question of what is the best lance in the light mech category. So that's 20 to 35 tons. We can only use uh, those mechs. And before we jump right into the typical video, which will start with a bit of a description on how the lance is built up and then some gameplay, I want to do a shameless plug for the channel if you like any form of guide videos for strategy guidance or let's plays feel free to give it a good look i do have quite a few videos that might be interesting for you with that out of the way let's jump into the light max so light max are interesting in a sense that all of the other categories usually had some sort of star league max or other max with special modules that were just outstanding and whilst the light uh, mech category is typically a scout category its main challenge when we're thinking about the best lance is that it will not have enough tonnage to actually uh, carry enough weaponage so first and foremost besides the obvious restriction that lighter mechs will have a harder time to keep up i am interested when selecting the mechs as of how much firepower a mech can carry and how we're eventually being able to overcome much much harder mechs so a couple of things around uh, the strategy behind light mechs if you want to do five school missions since evasion blips are not a absolutely reliable way of dealing with uh, these missions you will need to pack a lot of load in in terms of firepower in order to get through mostly the back armor of uh, the mechs Jump jets help in that regard, but are by no means the only way of essentially getting behind an enemy mech with good pilots. You can do that even without jump jets, which then brings us to the question of who has the more, most hard points. And the answer to that is relatively straightforward. The fire starter with six support hard points and six laser hard points is by far the best chassis that you can use. The Jenner is getting kind of a honorable mention uh, so to speak and also the panther for being very sturdy for a small mech but yeah compared to the fire starter both of the other mechs really don't make the cut which also means that the best lance uh, that i want to show you guys today consists sort of one raven as a support mech and basically a fire starter mech with uh, jump jets as well as two massively equipped fire starter mechs that do not have jump jets so looking at each of the four candidates individually the raven let's start here is a pure support mech and the reason why he is in that slate of mechs to begin with is the ecm field I've talked about that before and then the Raven has even a combination equipment where it's not only the ECM but EWM as well. So it's a countermeasure field but also an area sensor lock. Fair enough, you could potentially also equip another mech just with the ECM field. But the reality of it is the Raven really saves quite a bit of tonnage for having that on board automatically. That however comes at the cost of, despite it having quite a few hard points, not being able to shoulder all too much weaponage. What I will do with all of the small mechs is, so I'll just mention at once, I'll have a communication system triple plus in here for resolve gains, just to make sure that we get together with 50 morale, just two um, resolve based abilities every single round. All of them will also have a 35% dam stability damage reduction gyro within them, simply because small mechs above anything else will struggle with any form of stability damage once stability damage has actually kicked in they also lose their evasion blips and that is detrimental so it's potentially most important on the small max now in terms of weaponage one way to get around the very very low amount of tonnage that is available is actually the mg plus plus and that is a fantastic machine gun the idea of an MG++ is that it has the ability to have minus 0.5 tons, so it comes for free. Zero tonnage. The only thing that you need to load is ammunition. 
It also creates no heat whatsoever, which is again fantastic. So no heat, no tonnage. Just keep that in mind. This is how good the weapon is. And you just need to load enough ammunition in. This will be one of the biggest yeah, tricks or leverages that we're going to use. It is not as much damage as smaller lasers or ER small laser plus plus. So if you can actually shoulder more tons, of course, there will be better equipment. But with four support hard points here and six support hard points on all of the fire starters, this is a lot of damage just from zero weight. Additionally, we will have, at least for the Raven, because it is kind of a mid-tier engager, an ERM++ laser. The reason why I'm going for the ER version here is the Raven really has no other heat that it needs to sink, so we can also take a bit more aggressive heat-producing lasers. It'll go with those two lasers only. And if you've ever looked into a Raven, it is hard to even get 100 damage out of it. This Raven here has full armor on all of the slots because it is typically a little bit more fragile, but once it has armor, it will actually excel as a tank quite well. And it also pumps 165 damage, but that is not all. The other mechs are actually doing even more than. Now let's come to the fire starters next and just give you an appreciation of what is happening here. Really similar setup with all of the um, fire starters we're having communication systems we do we do have uh, gyros we do have arm mods just to get that extra melee damage um, they are coming at zero tonnage as well but you can fill the remainder of the mech because the heat efficiency really doesn't matter all too much you typically have two rounds and then you're getting out anyways and if push comes to shove you can use the machine guns as we've seen they are creating zero heat so Lots and lots of machine guns. The fire starters on their turn do have four to five lasers. I am using medium size and not ERM lasers in this case because the heat is just uh, much, much lower compared to the ER versions that are producing just more heat. So plus 10 damage on each of them just to make it even better. This guy here has jump jets in order to get behind the enemy and also be a tank if needed. And that's really it. The more damaging variant would change the jump jets for even more lasers. You see one, two, three, four, five lasers. I was trying six lasers, but the heat efficiency dropped. And keep in mind, even though it looks terrible, it's only a heat deficit of 30. That means we can have three rounds of actually going before we need to cool down a bit. And that is plenty, more than enough. And now, a drum roll, look at the firepower. We're netting 355 firepower. Yep, keep that in mind. We're talking about light mix, 355. That is typically comparable with a stock model of a at least heavy, if not many of the assaults will not even average that damage. I think the stock model or the stock damage of an Atlas is around that 350 with all of the weapons and the 100 tonnage load. So what really works well for us is the MG++ pluses and the lasers. However, that being said, even with 350 damage that we're pushing out, we will still need to make sure that we're getting behind the enemy as the heavier mechs, the assault mechs specifically, once they are using uh, damage reduction uh, techniques will overcome quite a bit of the damage of the machine gun. Keep in mind machine guns deal three damage. So let's say someone is braced and also has damage reduction. So like 40% damage reduction, all of a sudden the damage of three goes down to one damage per machine gun because the moment that it crosses the threshold of 30 percent it actually like zero percent damage reduction would deal uh, three damage per shot anything below 30 percent would deal two sh uh, damage per shot and anything above 30 percent in damage reduction would uh, deal one shot uh, one damage only because it's always being rounded down that's the way that battle tech calculates it so 
that's our one weakness that we have to deal with any form of damage reduction but shots into the back will not have any bracing or damage reduction effect so how is this playing out you ask well great question my friends let's jump right into a mission and take a good look at how the three fire starter and the raven are battling a five skull mission and in order to show the mechs on the most hostile environment, we're actually going to go into a Badlands scenario with a straight up recovery. We will have a five skull mission. Let me show you how the team would look like. This is how the team would look like. We have a couple of ace pilots and we do have a jump jet multi-targeting pilot with a bit more of a coolant vent because this could be the hottest, potentially hottest mech. And we do have a Raven with a sensor lock and higher initiative. So we're rocking five initiative here, four across the board. If we're going in, one of our main trademarks will be uh, to have the so-called double turn, um, saving time until the very end of the turn, then engaging, and then starting to shoot once again at the beginning of the next turn and basically jumping out. So let's deploy. Game tells us, of course, are you crazy to deploy a light mech only lance into a five school mission and i'll say yes we are but we are well prepared as well here we go good and we just joined into a mission this one here is a tough one we started down here and this is potentially one of uh, the landscapes that is most problematic for the type of lance that we're running the fire starters themselves tend to excel in flat areas so hilly terrain is not that great and we also want to like get close to the enemy as soon as possible we're fighting against two lances in minimum and this year like upwards hill battle would already be bad for a not movement based lance for this lance is going to be terrible plus the biome is not really good for us so if we win this one it is a testament that this uh, lance can even overcome like the worst situations on a five school mission first things first when we want to deal with uh, the lance we really want to get as close to the enemy as possible and we also want them to lose their braced status because we like i mentioned the machine guns are not tendentially not that good against damage reduction got a quick draw over here that is messing with our fire starter. And there are multiple ways of dealing with this situation. I think for now we're keeping the five evasion blips. That is good enough. And I'm hoping that that Highlander here is coming down anytime soon. So one of the things that we definitely can do is start with the Raven move in as aggressive as possible that way we are barely not discovered or spotted out and i hope that they don't have another sensor lock so we're prepping this quick draw here, essentially a little bit of damage and removing some of the evasion blips. You can see they are prepping us at the same time by reducing our evasion blips. What can I do for you? All right. certainly can jump all the way up here or even there which is better so it's going to be the play four evasion blips and we're going to use pre uh, precision strike now we either can go for the head which is unlikely to work because multi-shot uh, projectile weapons only hit the head once so we're trying to pour this guy Got a head hit out of it, which is fine. But the core of the idea was just to dish out enough damage to make him really regret taking us. Same deal here with the fire starter. 
We're down to five hit points, so this is very likely going to result in a kill. There we go. Mech destroyed. So, we want to close distance as soon as possible. Any movement like this will be helpful for us. For orders. Matter of fact, I am saving some heat. And we're just going to run up here. This guy here, the Highlander, next turn will die by us essentially shooting into his back. They're getting the angle on me. All right, let me fast forward. Beginning of next turn. Fantastic. So we're starting the turn. Standing by. This here is just behind a rock. Let's pick this one here. Two evasion blips, that's fine. And we could fully unload. Copy that. Gotta take vigilance because I know we're going to be retaliated upon. And there we go. Central to, uh, torso done. With enough firepower, you get 100 to 0 uh, from behind. So that's really what the lance is about. That's a good introduction. We killed two of the assault mechs by basically closing in really, really fast and not uh, waiting for them to engage on us. Fast forward. Let's see how we're going to deal with the rest here. Can't fully make it over there. So might as well sprint in. We got bad guys. That reduces our heat. And we're definitely going to take some attacks now. But I hope that our evasion blips will tank through that. Standing by. Same deal here for Mandrake. Let's move up to here. All right, fantastic. So far we're good. And we're now covering this up with our Raven moving in. Standing by. The playstyle is quite different to the other types of lances. Because here you're on a constant aggression path. You really want to get rid of the enemy as soon as possible. Good. New round. We got a Battlemaster here and we got a Zeus here. Got enough resolve to work a little bit with them. And this here is dangerous because we don't want to show them our back. At the same time, we want to kill these two massive mechs. Commander. So this here is our first move. We are still in the crystal field, which is good. I copy. And that's the Zeus done. We're essentially removing them faster than they can remove Ready. us. Waiting for orders. Uh, that would be a fantastic position. Let's do 
All right, sprinting over with Chemathorn here. I want to get that Battlemaster as well. Because our fire starter here is exposed. But by going in to the Battlemaster, there are three more mechs, and that's really the problem that we're currently facing. I hear ya. I could move all the way over to here and essentially have just that one mech, 60 ton mech in my back. I think that's the right call. Gotta play it aggressive. Jump jets, that's why we do have the jump jet mech with us. And this here should be a kill. Good. So two further... Assault makes are gone. And let's carefully move over. Literally to here, so that next turn... Uh, maybe to here. Good. So next turn, both of them will be well hidden and ECM prote uh, protected for now. Like I mentioned, we're going to take some sort of suffering for what we've just done. Quick draw is attacking we've us. We're also being me. sensor locked and the other Lance is now attacking us. But since they are coming a bit closer, what I would want to do now is we're just going to hide behind uh, the rocks here and we'll save a bit of heat next round we're then going to continue our attack okay so we have taken a position here enemy has been running into our Commander. defense and that is a pretty clear sign that they are getting quite desperate so in retaliation of that what we're going to do is Move all the way over here and basically kill them from behind. All right, here we go. Precision strike onto the quick draw. Almost got it down. Critical hit. And the beauty about this position is we have the fast initiative. Yes, Commander. Copy that. Another precision strike. And another full Roger. focus. Let's go. Let's go. There Target we go. Eliminated. Enemy down. Okay, back on track. Uh, we still have two rather heavy mechs here and an awesome over here ready to go and pounce for us. So what we're going to do is I would like to potentially move around here and hit them from behind. The way we're going to do that is we're repositioning. Let me do that in fast forward. Okay, next round. Uh, they were simply moving up and then running into our field which of course is a huge huge mistake let's use our I advantage you. here nice little jump behind the awesome and then we're trying to finish the guy almost got him there yes boss Fortunately, we can't hit him yet again. What's up, boss? But we do have Ace Pilot over here. Receiving you. So. This here would work. This here potentially would work as well. 
And that's at least preventing us from being attacked from behind. Fire starter moves up and let's try to get the Zeus. Taking the shot. No Same deal. We got him fair and square. Ready for orders. Could continue with the awesome over here. Just try to get it down as much as possible. Could also move up here, but yeah, that would be difficult. Yes, so you know what? We do have three evasion blips here. We have four evasion blips over here. So we should be fine. The awesome, of course, could turn around and try to hit us, in which case we counter with the fire starter and hit him from behind. Sometimes you gotta wait and see what the enemy is going to do. Right One hit is not going to end it. Did he really just turn his back on us? Oh wow, that was a horrible decision. Confirmed. Moving up. Firing. Couple of shots. Uh, the guy, uh, the awesome, will potentially move in. No, he does not. Instead, he's trying to hit us. Thankfully, we had a lot of evasion blips and he did miss. We had 40% damage reduction, so it wouldn't have been the end of uh, the world. I copy. Moving up over here. And... Let's try to hit the awesome here in the back. Firing at enemy Almost got him Let's just go. with medium Let's lasers. Go. Okay, another turn for us. Receiving you. Time to finish the awesome over here. Affirmative. There we go. Standing by. All right, moving over here. Roger. The starter moves up. Precision strike. Locked on rear armor. And there we go. That's it, guys. That was the best light squad or best light lance that I could bring up. You can see that even against overwhelming odds of two fully fledged lances of assault mechs all of which are in difficult terrain we are fighting upwards the hills and we're fighting in the badlands which means our heat management is just way worse than it normally would be with all of these things combined it still was a successful mission and with that i'll close uh, the video and the display of a powerful lance i hope you enjoyed it Check out the other uh, most powerful Lance videos and leave your comment uh, down below. I'm always curious to hear what else you'd like to see. Maybe we're going to visit a few underutilized mechs next. Thanks a lot for your viewership and see you very soon. Bye bye.